Okay, friends, welcome to Cordova Hill, day one of the Fur Runway 2024 Open World Championship. Uh, you're watching the lead snow machine here. Uh, we're about an hour and 21 minutes into day one race. That means that Buddy Streeper will be coming around. In fact, there might be a dog team down there. I'm gonna zoom in for you. The trail is a little bit narrower this year. And uh, that's gonna be an interesting factor. There you go, that was the Alaska Sled Dog Association race crew. There's somebody down there walking their dogs. Remember, please don't bring your sled dogs to a, or sorry, your home dogs to a sled dog race. Anyway, here we are at Cordova Hill. We're waiting on the first team to come up. It's gonna be Buddy. He was bib number two this morning of the 13 teams that left from 4th Ave. Yep, here we go right now. Hopefully you've been listening on the radio station. If you're outside of Alaska, you have to find the AM. If you're inside of Alaska, 96.7. Mike and Eddie are on line uh, radio right now. I'm listening in my headset. <clears throat> and it's sunny. It's warmer than it was at the start today. And any minute now, any second now, we're going to see... 10-time winner Buddy Streeper come around that corner on the, down there on day one. It's been an exciting race so far for the teams that everybody thought would have fast times. Annie Mallow moving right along. Reme Kost from Sweden moving right along. He ran out of the start basically. Uh, Buddy of course having another good run. He's entirely focused on putting number 11 in the record book so that would be win number 11 this year if we can get the fastest time over three days we're going to see his team coming around any minute the trail is narrower so for those of you who have watched this footage over the years or been here on 15th and cordova uh, i'm much more out into the road than i used to be you can see down there those people um, the trail used to basically be about that wide and then uh, the berm would start so it's narrower this year, that means there's only room for two teams on here. I'm zoomed fully in, teams show up any second now. Thanks so much friends, it'd be great to have uh, cameras all around the trail and a mix master and everything, but we don't have that, we have this right now, so here you go, here comes Buddy. I can see a dog team there. Yep, all right, we're gonna have a great shot here friends. Buddy Streeper off in the distance on day one. The 2024 Rendezvous, so exciting. People are watching from all around the world because there's no telling what's gonna happen at a sled dog race. That's the one truism. Buddy Streeper, he calls his team the Canadian Express. All the Streepers are here. All six that have ever run the race are here. Look at that. There goes Buddy Streeper on day one, friends. Looking good, kicking, running. Happy dog, a little bit warm. You can see them panting a little bit. That's just what happens when that sun comes out here in the Arctic. <clears throat> okay, well, we don't know exactly when team number two is gonna come down, but there you go, Linda McKenzie just said it. Go Canadian Express. It's a real treat to see Roy Smith said thanks for the great coverage from the Adirondacks in New York. We're Welcome our fans and friends from around the world. Whether you've ever been to Anchorage, Alaska or not, we want you to feel welcome here. This is a place for people who love dogs, dog sports, and cities that have dog parties like this. There are races around the world that got canceled this year for the first time in a long time due to snow conditions. Canada's feeling it. Minnesota and upper parts of Wisconsin and other areas are feeling the, the bad winter. And cancel races but right here in Alaska we have good coverage of snow as you can see the Sun is out so now we're at the warm part of the day here this is Friday the 23rd of February tomorrow should be colder and then it should be colder again on Sunday we just had a big warm-up uh, a few days ago it was in the 40s here in Alaska we had rain we had different issues but we had snow yesterday the trail crew from Astra works really hard and as you can see right now there's plenty of coverage Thanks again to the Anchorage Police Department, APD, and Anchorage Public Works for all that they do. Maintaining all these different road crossings all throughout the city. There's no city on earth that puts on a race like this. 
That's why the Ferrande is so special. It's been here for 89 years. It has some of the most unbelievable stories and memories of all over the eras and ages. This is the beginning of celebration time in Alaska that we made it through the winter. And right now we're just waiting on team number two to come up, or the second team I should say, to come up the hill. The bibs were drawn on Wednesday night at Flat Top Pizzeria. The mushers reached into a can, picked out a number, and that was their start number for today. So Buddy had drew, drew, drew number two, so he just came up the hill. He had passed Frank, um, and <clears throat> Frank's out there on the trail. I think that there's probably going to be the inevitable stories from mushers about some moose and different things on the trail. We'll see. Each year there's some sort of obstacle people have to overcome, and that's why there's no telling ever uh, who's going to win a sled dog race. You never know. It takes all three days to cross that line. And this trail goes over bridges, through culverts, past the university, all through the normal hiking and biking and ski trails, fat biking trails. Anchorage is a very busy community of people out and about all winter long. So the dog teams will come across people who are skiing, people who are fat biking, people who are walking their dogs, people who are just out and about and don't even know that there's a race going on. So that's why this race is so exciting. The sled dogs have to be able to deal in their minds with distraction some of the previous champions like Arlie Reynolds from Salcha he had to learn how during the off season his dogs needed constant noise conditioning so at his kennel his pile driver kennel up there in Salcha he installed speakers outside in the dog yard that would play music and all sorts of things so that he could have his dogs listening to different music and different sounds all throughout the year he made in his own trail system, little culverts and little bridges and things so that the dogs could learn to go over those as normal. He made little scarecrows out of, you know, secondhand uh, store clothing and things and he'd hang them over the trail. And that teaches a sled dog team that it's okay, everything's okay, just stay focused on your mission and keep running. When a team's not that experienced with people and dogs and bikes and everything that a city has as part of its normal city life, then dogs can sort of panic a little bit, maybe slow down, maybe get distracted, and then bunch up. And once a set of dogs starts to slow down up front, then the rest of the team either has to you know, slow down together or they start tangling a little bit. So that's why we call it strong-headed dogs, dogs that have overcome that challenge and realized, this is fun, this is what I want. So when you go to the start footage and you watch those dogs in harness just losing their minds on 4th Ave, there's Kim Wells saying, we have another team coming. They are excited to be on that trail. They have been in distractions before and they say, give it to me, I just want to run. So it's really neat to see uh, how the best dogs in the world respond to all these distractions. There's Barbara Heap joining us. Thanks so much, Barbara, for being a big supporter of Slow Dog Sports. Here comes a team around. There we go, nice looking team. I'm just trying to hold the super zoom on for you there. That team's very far away, so we'll track it all the way up the hill here. And this is only the second team to come up Cordova. Look at them looking great. All right. That is Frank Huberman. He, he's he's going to make it. That is bib number one. There he is. Frank Haberman. Here we go, friends. Frank Haberman. So he's still holding his position. That's great. Great job, Frank. Look at that. He said he has older dogs on his team this year, but there he is. So Buddy passed him, but Frank was able to hold his position by a couple minutes. So that's a great, great, great achievement today. We're going to start to see more teams here. We'll probably see Greg Taylor real soon. He was bib number four. Another dog team right there. That was great. Congratulations, Frank. How cool. I really like Frank. He does a lot of the work himself with not much help down there in Clam Gulch. That's on the Kenai near Soldatna, but here's another team coming up. 
see that sunshine starting to beat down. Trail is definitely narrower this year, friends. That looks like Taylor, babe number four. Let's see. This is that beautiful Samsung 24. Zoomed in for you. Okay, Greg Taylor's team losing a little focus there. You can see them getting pretty warm. They want them to stay more focused tomorrow. They know better. But that's what happens when the heat comes out. They can get a little distracted. Okay, keep it together. That's how we call this heartbreak hill. The whole race can be lost right in this kind of little bit of lack of focus. Okay, it looks like he's going to lead them up. Here comes Greg Taylor out of Fairbanks, Alaska. A veteran to this race. He knows how this goes. Those leaders got a little bit distracted there. That's what sometimes the heat can do. I'm not dragging them up. Beautiful looking dogs. Okay, Greg's back at his sled. Kim's from the club. She's going to help that. There we go. There we go. There, a little bit of reset. Focus is back on. Nice job, Greg. Go get him. Go get him. All right, there's Greg Taylor. Lost his hat. Somebody grab that for him. All right, great job there. <laughs> so that's Greg Taylor. You can see what a little bit of fatigue will do to a team. Again, those lead dogs have to stay laser focused. And if they just get a little bit interested in maybe snow dipping or taking a little break or say, hey, this is a nice stop uh, here, then, then you get that. You get that little slowdown. That clock starts ticking. Uh, it starts to raise everybody's heartbeat because... We want to see the dog team lined out and moving well. But I can really uh, start to feel that sun beating down on me. It's going to cool off tomorrow. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. This is the official coverage here from Cordova Hill. Each year, Rondi tries to bring the start somewhere on the trail and then pre and post race coverage. Uh, right now, there's just one of me out here this year in the last six years. I'm Kale Casey, your host, official live streamer for Sled Dog Sports around the world. Uh, ideally, down the road, we can get a, a bigger team and then be in more places. Uh, right now, you have a team coming. You can hear people calling out, dog team. It's so exciting. People come from all over. They're there to close that road now. It's such a coordinated race because the city is still in full operation, except for the dogs are coming down through... Uh, Cordova and Forth, so the police department and all the support crew are there at all times helping out. It's just an amazing effort. Look at that sun blazing down, friends. People are cheering along. Okay, you can see that little fatigue coming in. There's Marvin Cochran right there from North Pole. Marvin's done this hill many times. He's running nicely. They've made it over that little crest. They're going to keep going. You can see there's just a touch of fatigue, but they kept moving. Great job for Marvin. His wife's cat here. Big shout out to Cat supporting. It takes a whole family. Look at this nice, beautiful rough here. You got the kiddos. You got an even younger kiddo right there. See that big sunshine? All right, boy, it is cooking here, friends. We've had a big temperature swing from this morning in the 20s to right now, we're probably in the 30s. A beautiful spring day in Alaska, but we'd like it to be a little cooler tomorrow. That's what we're in forecast for, so stay tuned. This is just day one. And remember, there's so many strategies around pacing the dogs in this race. So it's really challenging because some days your dog team just looks like they have endless energy. But it's a three-day race. It's a very, very challenging race. And the temperatures do swing. So the mushers really have to keep an eye on their average speed, especially over those first 6 to 10 miles each day because that's where going a little bit too fast can cost you big in those last four miles. We're at mile 20 three right here 23 plus 26 mile race so you're seeing where the gas tank meter is on some of these teams let's see if this is michael tetzner or who this is down there sometimes you just get a glance of a color all right holding that shot for you Oh, I see it there. 
Wow. Let's see how the dogs do once they hit the actual incline. That is Michael right there. I called it. Michael Tetzner coming in. Looking good. Dogs are still moving. You can tell that they're warm. You can tell Michael's warm, but they're moving. Michael Tetzner out of Berg, Germany right there. Looking good. That's nice. You just got to get through the hill on warm days. That's all there is to it. Okay, more teams, friends. Let's zoom right in. We got action. There's three teams coming. This is going to be exciting. Share the feed right now if you want to show off some of the coolest moments in sled dog sports here we are Andy Hewton there then we got two teams look at the teams charging they're chasing those dogs know it always harder on the front team because the other teams are chasing Andy Hewton here coming up the hill he's out in Nana look at him focus running bid number six that team is trying to pass from the outside there you go there's Reme he's made up so much speed he's moving look at that he ran that whole hill there we go, there's Andy Mallow. This is getting exciting here. We got two rookies who broke into the top five right there, basically. Reme is moving, friends. Oh my God, bib number 11 just blew this track apart. That team looked great. You could see them on the right side there of Andy trying to pass on the outside, charging uphill. Reme Cost has gone up his first heartbreak hill in fine fashion. To everybody around the world who's watching Remy, he made it through the first big gauntlet challenge of day one, which is you have to you have to match Buddy on Heartbreak Hill. If you want to win this race, you have to dominate this hill. Your team has to be an express train, and that's what we just saw there. That was really, really cool. Wow. Okay, so we're waiting on that next team now. It is sunny. I can field on my face. I should probably have some sunscreen on. That was so exciting, friends. Go ahead and rewind that. Wow, three teams coming up the hill. That was Andy Hewton, Remy Coast, and Annie Mallow. Wow. Look at that. Remy already made up four minutes on Annie and then caught other teams that left way before him. So he's just flying down that trail. Let's see what type of day one time he puts up. Because remember, I'll keep explaining it just so you get it. Strategy here is really challenging. Really challenging. Because you can have a great day one. You can have a great any part of the race. But you have to be good and the fastest overall after three days. And that is the trick. That's why Buddy... George Atla, Ego Ellis, and a few other mushers are in the history books in such incredible ways because it's very hard to win this race, let alone have a dynasty here. That was super cool though. Jeffrey Jones said, nice, now nah, that is Rondi racing. And Billy Allen said, that's going to be an impressive time for Remy. I agree, you guys, this is so cool. Oh man, that was so nice. We have Kelly watching from Hobart, Australia. Welcome to all of our friends from Oz. Frederick Von Hatten. He's cheering on Reme, the Comet Kost. Uh, he does not pronounce his last name Costa. His last name is Kost, even though it's spelled C-O-S-T-E. So there you go for all of Remy's new fans from around the world. He, his wife Lily, his son Coco. They've been involved in Sled Dog Sports for years. There's Jesse Holmes joining us. We have mushers from all around the world. And if you want to see one of the most exciting runs of the last several years, rewind just about seven minutes and you'll see Remekos coming up, middle of the three teams, and then just blasting this hill to pieces. He trains as a running musher, a true sprint musher. That's his level of training from back home. So even this morning when he first got out of his big bus, when he and Lily pulled into 4th Ave, he had his sprint running suit on. He had his serious focus. <clears throat> and we gave you extra good footage of the outside of the bus. We haven't given you the inside of the bus yet. We're giving them, uh, Reme and his wife, time to focus on their dogs. 
We really work on bringing you the best coverage anywhere in the world, but we also like to give those who have the race focus that extra space to really, really hone in, because this race requires an enormous amount of concentration. And there's a few mushers here who are gonna stay laser focused right to Sunday, because this could come down to seconds on Sunday to see who wins the 2024 Rondi. Again, if Buddy pulls it off, he enters the forever history books. It'll take somebody else a whole dynasty of their own to figure out how to win more than 11. Okay, team coming. Let's see if this is Andrea. That team's right about to cross that road right there. They look good. And that looks like it's Andrea Bond out of Salcha. That's Gary Markby's partner. They trade off uh, who mushes each year. It's always great to see them here. Let's see how that dog team does with this heat. You can see the trail is narrower this year. There we go, beautiful. She's kicking still. Here we go. Go get him, Andrea. There she is, kicking over the top of Cordova. There you go. There's that road organization right there helping out, making sure everything's dialed, traffic crosses right away. Holy moly. Okay, we're waiting on some more rookies now. We still have uh, Charlie, we have Jake, we have Sean. Uh, we've already had uh, Ramey and Annie, the, or two of our rookies, have already gone by, so now we're waiting on the rest of our rookies. Wow. That was so exciting. Egel Ellis just said he beats everyone in Europe. Well, if you guys didn't tune in live, go back, rewatch it. It is a very impressive run today for Ramey Coast, and We'll see what his strategy is. Eggo can chime in here or other champions online. It's, uh, it's not about day one, it's about the end of day three. And it's not over till it's over. There could be obstacles on this trail every given day between unknowns like moose, bicyclists, loose dogs, skiers, who knows what, to things like weather. Or uh, maybe a dog gets injured and you have to carry the dog and then maybe another dog has an issue so all of a sudden your sled has a lot of weight so a lot of things can happen here you can go out too fast on a given day and that uh, costs you uh, time per mile later it is a 26 mile per day race approximately so there's just a lot of strategy but who doesn't want to have a great day one and Remy's a professional he knows his team he knows what they can do but he only has one team in the race. He does have eight dogs with Sean because uh, he wanted Sean, who also has some streeper dogs, to have a nice team and show up this year. So hats off to the streepers for helping one more musher, Sean Constantine Dawolski, out of Fairbanks, be here. That gave us 13 teams. I talked to Terry Streeper uh, a couple weeks ago from my office in Willow, and we were chatting about everybody, and he reminded me when he raced here in the 90s, 80s, uh, there was only nine teams that year, so it, it's a very rare event to be able to put together an open class team. We know that Mitchell Jacobson was training up in Fairbanks. He's out of Tuktoyoktok. He was trying to be here, but there was too cold of temperatures for too long to get all the miles in. The Earhart family was helping him out, but he couldn't make it this year because of that. <laughs> we have Wendy, who we're missing right now. We're missing Don Cousins. We're missing a lot of folks. I was thinking about all the mushers who aren't here from around North America and the world, and we're certainly grateful for everybody who made it. Uh, it takes just so many factors, uh, and some of that's in your control, some of it's out of your control. So if you have a dream of being at the Ferrande, start training now mentally. <laughs> start getting your dogs accustomed to uphill running and running with distractions there. So we got Lori Schneider joining us from Maine. Deborah Baines is joining us from Arizona, right on. Great to have you here. Sherry Beagley said, Ramey cruised up that hill. You bet. So did Buddy. And Annie's team looked great too, right? She just happened to be behind. This is a narrow trail this year, friends. I mean, look at it. 
This is a narrower trail. I'm normally not sitting this far out into the road. You can see how much road down there where that cone is in the right. Uh, that is part of Cordova. That is actually the street. And so we're at, way out of the sidewalk and we're, I'm feeling like I'm sitting in the middle of the road. So it's a narrower trail. We saw that play out a minute ago when Annie Hutton, Reme Cost, and Annie Mallow came up all three together, basically. And it was really neat. We're waiting around that corner here to see who's next. Could be a Jake Robinson. He was bib number 13. He got second place a couple years ago at the Paws or last year. So he's, there were some mushers like Annie and Jake who were hoping to go to Canada race circuit this year before coming to the Rondi to get another year of practice in. But the Canadian race circuit took a real hit this year with the weather. And when you don't have snow, you can't put on races. So um, it's a real shame. But some of the big races that have been going for a long, long time got canceled in Canada. What that means is we're lucky because we get them to come here to Anchorage. Makes for very exciting racing. And it's so neat. There's Christina Moore and watching from New Hampshire. Endurance Kennels, good to have you with us, brother. Lucy Bachelor is watching from Long Island, New York. Right on. Glad to have our East Coasters here. Sandra Perry said impressive bib number 11. Yep, that's Remy Coas. That uh, He might have the time of the day. Let's just see. They probably have those all in right now. I'm just, I got the headset on here. Right on. Okay, there's obviously a gap between the teams. That's what happens uh, in these type of races. And then tomorrow, We'll start to see the order change up. How are they finished today? They'll usually flip it and do a reverse order. That way the slower teams get out first and the faster teams then get to go uh, and play pursuit. Um, you have to have lead dogs that are comfortable with going in the chase mode and in the pass mode and keep everything focused. These teams can measure over 50 feet long from the clip on the sled to the nose of the lead dog. They can be up to 60 feet long. If they have 18 dogs, 16 dogs, that's as long as one of those big semis on the highway. So remember, when your lead dogs are passing, they have to be ready to maintain that speed. Here comes a team right now, and then they have to stay focused on the mission at hand. So dog team coming. People are getting excited. Kim's calling out down there. Thanks to all the volunteers, all the sponsors. We make all this possible. Thanks to all you for all your great comments. Great to have Nina Scramstad here. She's one of the original live streamers out there in the world. There's only a handful of us who actually took this seriously back in the day. Tony Spears said, so far Remy one and Street for two. Copy, copy, thanks Tony. Look at that. Well, another call. That is Jake Robinson, friends. And we have another team right behind him, so I'm going to hold this shot right here. Look at Jake, all focus, going for it, and then a team right here. So, boom. That team is driving and kicking. Exciting action on... Here we go, running, running, nice. Way to see it. Let's see what those dogs do. There they go, they're passing me. Okay, there's Sean. Sean Constantine Dawolski. Good run for Sean. He's staying focused there, remember, half his team's from Buddy. He's been mushing about 15 years. We haven't seen him down here in this circuit, but boy. He kept his race focused there. Yeah, he's got a great story. Buddy called him about a week or so ago and offered him eight dogs to help him get to the start line here. That's how the community works. Really appreciate all that. Yeah, exactly. Deb Reisberg said, Jake smoking up that hill. He did look good. I had a hunch he was going to make up some time. I'm really proud of him. <laughs> Just a really energetic guy and uh, kind and caring and I always enjoy that when I'm doing my work of sharing stories with you 
when I get to go and visit with somebody who just inspires the heck out of everybody, I always love that, right? That's that's what it's all about. So good job, Jake. Charlie had a great uh, Mushers bib speech the other night. He was all excited too. And then we've got uh, who else is out here on the trail? Let's just see how it plays out. We're getting close to having everybody up the hill. And there were some teams, like we said, who were probably real close to being able to start the race today, but just didn't have the miles or or maybe the temperature got in the way or something else. So Alaska had a minus 40 10-day period about three weeks ago. Minus 50, minus 60 with wind chills, and that can really affect your training, uh, especially for these shorter hair dogs. So really appreciate Larry Mark Sr. there and... And Deb saying, uh, remember to check out Ferrandi.net. There's Alan Keeper saying, go Jake. Um, again, it just everybody's uh, support of the mushers. They get to watch this when they're home uh, in the hotel between taking care of the dogs. And they get to see all your nice comments. They get to rewatch themselves. And it becomes a nice journal scrapbook for them. So here we go. Do we have another team coming around? Yep, Doc and George are smiling, looking down the race. You bet. Annie's in third right now, according to Tony. Thanks so much. That makes sense. If, uh, if I had to have guessed the top three of this race, I would have put uh, Remy, Buddy, Annie. And then, of course, you have Taylor, Tetzner. You have, you have people who can put the speed on like Jake. Um, Andrea and Gary's team is always can put some speed on. Marvin can always put some speed on. There's two teams right there. So this will be a cool moment. Share the feed. This is going to be a sweet little moment here. We'll see how the dogs look coming up. Look at that. What a nice shot. Looking back, kicking. You hear the crowd cheering. Oh boy, it's going to be a pass on the right, pass on the left side. There we go, that's what a pass looks like, okay. The one musher gave trail. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, okay, that team's clear now, they're heading up. Nice move there. Okay, good, good, good. There's Jess. Right on, there's Charlie, okay, good. So that was a classy move. Look at that, he's pumping his arms, that's so nice, way to go there. Look at that, boom, boom, okay, good work there. That got everybody up and over the hill. That is exciting, friends, there's a little moment there where, uh, <laughs> or of course the camera flipped around. But there you go, Jess and Charlie cruising up the hill looking good, way to defer there and, and make that pass clean. We like to see that. I believe that that's everybody. Yeah, looking good girl is right. She looked great. I believe we have wrapped this hill here, friends, and hopefully you are watching the times come in over at the ASDRA's website, ASDRA. Search for that. Go there. Those split times come in. Listen on the radio. I think that's it, friends. That's 13, right? Yeah. Okay, just ask Tyler. That's 13. Okay, good. They're coming in now at the finish. I can hear it on the radio. That's how I, that's how I look. I got the radio on my headset here. Thanks so much, friends. We'll see you tomorrow.